Big Hawk 45 here, finally doing an 1873 exclusive video. Yes, this is it. This is the gun that the Cowboys should have been carrying in all those westerns you've been watching where they're carrying an 1892 Winchester, the 1873. Uh, every time I, oh, about every few months, someone will write me, hey, Hickok, when are you going to do a video on that beautiful 1873 rifle? We've done a bunch of them, haven't we? You know, and I'll look it up, and I'll say, hey, you know, I guess we haven't done a single video on it, an individual video on, it. and I'll put that on my list, and then I'll forget about it maybe, and about six months later, I'll get another note from someone the same thing, you know. And so anyway, we've had it on the list to get this baby out when it's not on the table with 14 other beautiful lever guns, and you know, going through all the history of all of them. The, the universe of lever actions and all that sort of thing. So you've seen it, but you, it just has not gotten the attention it deserves, uh, all by its little lonesome, okay? The 1873 Winchester, this is the Uberti reproduction of it. Uh, I've had this a long time, shot it a lot, and uh, you can just tell, I mean, it, it, it looks old almost from the wear. Uh, well, it is. Uh, uh, when was it? In the 18, 18 the 1990s. So, uh, but anyway, that's not long ago necessarily, but let's take a couple of shots with it. It's a great gun. My voice is a little under the weather today, so you'll have to listen closer and get closer to your computer. How's that? All right. Got my Tang Lyman t oh, Marbles tank side on it. I ought to shoot that owl. He looks evil. Let's try a two liter. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's go on over there and hit a red plate. Oh man. Is that a gorgeous sound? <laughs> I'm going to hit a, a uh, ram. And another one. And another one. <laughs> and a gong. Boom. And a clay pot right here. And a target. Oh man, it's right in the bullseye. Imagine that, this long range. <laughs> yeah, let's go there and see what else I can find. Combat mode. <laughs> oh, I had one round left. That was pretty funny, wasn't it? And I missed the cowboy. So you can, as I've said before, you can miss with anything, can't you? Yeah, this is the 1873 Winchester. And I was shooting some uh, 250 grain 45 Colt round. Feels good. Yeah, the 1873, we've just not done something uh, on it individually and wanted to do that of all, of all rifles. You know, this, is, uh, this one does carry the title, as many firearms do, I guess, uh, the gun that won the West. Because, for a lot of reasons, hype and everything else, marketing, but also 1873 goes back a ways, you know? Uh, now I wasn't, well actually I was, but I don't like to admit it, uh, there during the days of the Wild West. But you know, the West was still pretty wild in 1873. And, uh, and that's not a joke, you know what I mean. That wasn't long uh, after the Civil War actually. And uh, you know, you still have people, you know, the buffalo hunters and uh, a lot of stuff going on in the West, uh, you know, in the 1870s. And it became more tame in the 1880s, 1890s, I guess, depending on where you were. But this baby came out in 73. It was the, the first center fire, you know, a rifle like this of its kind. And it used a, a cartridge that looked a little bit like this, but it was a 44, uh, the 4440. It was chambered in. Center fire, you know, the primer, in the center of the case. Up to that point, you know, the 1866 Winchester, you know, the yellow boy with the brass frame you've seen right here on this table, the Henry rifle. Uh, those fired a rimfire 44 cartridge, in fact, the same cartridge. But when uh, the center fires came out, that was big time. And you've seen our video, I hope, called 1873. And that's when uh, this baby came about, uh, introduced by Winchester, and the center fire cartridge, the 4440. Big events in 1873. And uh, so this rifle deserves. Uh, um, you know, some hoopla and some acclaim, it really does. It was manufactured in big numbers and a lot of people that could afford it bought them. So they were out there and 
And again, if you've got a rifle like this that holds 10, 13 rounds of center fire, 44 caliber, you, you've got quite a weapon. I'll call it a weapon if you need it, right? You've got quite a, an instrument here uh, for 1873 because you've seen, and we'll do a little of that today, maybe fire quickly and maybe even accurately, right? Uh, it's, it's quite a rifle because it hadn't been all that long ago uh, you'd have been, if, 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 uh, if I was sitting around in the living room with my father and I was cleaning my 1873, he would have been telling me how lucky I am to have this thing because just 20 years ago, all he had was a single shot, you know, or more recently than that even, you know, or a muzzle loader. So uh, think about it, what they were using in the Civil War. And this is just what, seven, eight years later, after the end of the Civil War, you've got a rifle like this firing a center fire cartridge holding 10, 15 rounds. So pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Uh, uh, this was the first one, uh, the 1866 had a brass bronze frame, and then this was the first one with the iron frame, okay, the, the steel. And that was one of the differences right there. And it's uh, a lot like the 1866, though, really. Just not quite as pretty, some people would think, because of the iron frame. And uh, very, very widely. I think they, they made these up until about uh, 1923, 24, before they ceased production. I'll load on yakking. I'm going to go to black powder now. Okay. But uh, they, uh, <clears throat> they sold a lot of these. It was really popular. And uh, I think it was the most popular Winchester lever gun until the 1894 came out that was the only one that really surpassed it in popularity but and of course it was designed by John Browning right now this is still the old toggle link system and I talk about that in some of the other lever gun videos it it's not really designed to handle really high powered rounds like the 4570 John Browning had to come up with the 1886 for that right and uh Let's see what it'll do with black powder. All right. There was a movie made about this gun too, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, Jimmy Stewart's the star, and it's called like Winchester 1873. So if you like westerns, you've probably already seen it. If you're just learning to like westerns, look it up, okay? All right, we're gonna get a little more smoke now. <laughs> Boom. All right. <laughs> I think point of impact's not too different. Let me try that red plate over there. <laughs> and under it. Yeah. Gong time. <laughs> Can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Smoke some pot. <laughs> Click. Oh boy, did those get it dirty? Look at that. This gun I used in uh, uh, cowboy action shooting, and I shot black powder most of my years doing that through this rifle. So this rifle uh, has seen a lot of action, a lot of cowboy action. <laughs> I lugged this around a lot of ranges and uh, you know just kept it going. What I would do, I shot black powder, and in those matches you might shoot a stage, and then you know you'll sh actually pick up your firearms again and fire them for another. Well, it could be an hour. It could be even longer, depending on the match. And I would keep a little can of ballistol. I would you know stand them up somewhere wherever it was they were supposed to be and then I would just spray a little uh, squirt of ballistol like this down the barrel just to keep the black powder soft I don't think I have to do it today because we'll be shooting so much but we would keep that from hardening and it will do it that crud will develop in the in the barrel and it's like cement uh, if you don't keep it uh, wet lubed and, and all that I don't when I load my black powder I cheat basically I started out doing it the right way, uh, lubing these with a uh, black powder lube and going through all that, the wads and everything, and you know, taking all that extra time to do it. But then I got to thinking, realized that maybe that wasn't all that necessary for the way I was using it. I wasn't going into the mountains and, and needing to rely on it. I was just shooting to get a match, 
and keeping it clean and I was right there with it. So I just started loading regular bullets. They were easier to get anyway and easier to find and, and, uh, and load. And then I would just use the old ballast hauler uh, between stages and it took care of that. But both my handguns and my rifle. So if you're a, a frontier cartridge shooter in uh, cowboy action shooting, just a little tip there, uh, you, you can really, uh, <laughs> you can just eliminate a lot of that stuff you're doing probably. Because this worked fine for me for years. Just regular bullets, regular modern lube. As long as you keep some solvent handy. All right. These are uh, these are gorgeous rifles, and uh, they're so easy to load. If you've ever had a uh, maybe a 30/30 or something, the loading gate would want to pinch you badly. But these things are like loading butter almost. They're really simple to load. They get dirty, filthy. That's okay. Who has not been so? We need another shot or two on that target. <laughs> Think there'll be black powder residue on it? <laughs> nice. Oh boy. I love that smell. If you've never smelled black powder, real black powder, you've missed out on one of life's simple pleasures. You know what? There's a cinder block over there, or a piece of one that needs to be dealt with. Yeah. <laughs> Consider yourself dealt with. Let's try the little red plate. Well, let's just shoot low. There we go. Got him up high enough. Propane. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, let's hit that big tank over there. <laughs> Black powder is a little muffled sounding, isn't it? You know, just uh, so I feel armed, I had to, you know, just have this stuck in my belt, the old uh, Black Powder 1884. I just, you know, thought it would make me feel better about doing a video with this rifle. <laughs> yeah, by the way, also, you might have heard, and, and you will see in the movie, because all of you I know will run out and buy Winchester 1873 with Jimmy Stewart. You'll see they talk about this one of a thousand business in there. Uh, kind of the subject of the video, uh, the 1873 Winchester. They did, uh, they, they would test every barrel, of course, and uh, the barrels that were more accurate than the others, whenever they'd run across a barrel that seemed a little more accurate than the others, it grouped particularly well. They would uh, put that one aside and they would they called it one out of a thousand and they would put that on a stock and a gun they make it a, a little dress here they put it on a gun i think with a set trigger and uh, just make it a, a little bit special and sell it for i think around 100 bucks they'd sell it for more and it was uh, considered highly desirable because that barrel was so so i think it was probably dramatized and, and more uh uh more well more dramatized than it really should have been probably but, but that's what they did, and so when you hear that one of a thousand, that's what they're talking about. Okay, and then that movie deals with that. That's why everybody's fighting for that, that rifle, for one reason. I didn't have to fight for mine like that. Let's load it up again. Okay. We go 45 slugs. Nothing like it. Now, like I say, uh, the authenticity on this one, I admit, is, is not 100% for sure. Of course, it's a reproduction. But it's a uh, 45 Colt. This rifle was not chambered for 45 Colt back in the day for various reasons. But uh, uh, I choose not to load 4440. It's a neck cartridge, tapered, and I just never wanted to mess with it, fool with it. So I wanted to uh, just carry the same rifle cartridge that I uh, competed with as on my pistol. All my Western style revolvers or 45 Colt. I just like that caliber. Do I need to tell you? I just have always liked that caliber, 45 Colt. And so uh, I just compromised and um, my rifle is 45 Colt as well. Kept things simple. And by the same token, that's one reason the 4440 uh, Colt Peacemaker was fairly popular too. Not as popular as a 45 Colt, but when this came out and it was a highly desirable rifle, you can see the black powder all over my hands already, uh, then, you know, 
Colt chambered the Colt single action in 4440, and that way you could have the same you know, chamberings and everything. So keep one set of ammo for both right, both rifle and uh, revolver. Just like most of you probably do, you probably are carrying, say, a nine millimeter in your waist right now, and you've got a nine millimeter sub gun, you know, some machine gun in your car, probably, right? Is that just 10 outdoors nine? All right, gong time. I want to wake up the gong some more. Come on, get it up. <laughs> I love that. I love that sound. Oh. It'll crank them out. Click. <laughs> Doesn't take long to empty them, does it? I was going to do that. Let's do that now. Uh, as I tend to try to demonstrate every time we bring out a lever gun, these little babies will uh, be pretty effective if you can just hold them on target and kind of get the knack of it, even with a fairly powerful cartridge. Now, a lot of the cowboy action shooters, they shoot a 38 or something that uh, you talk about a wimp load. I mean, you don't even know you fired anything, uh, but then some don't. Uh, and I prefer not to shoot the little wimp loads. I just wanted to shoot 45 real cartridges and, and uh, you know, have fun with it. Didn't really care how I, how I came out. I wasn't looking to win the, the world championships or anything. But even with full power ammo like this, you can crank these babies out. <laughs> and you can really smoke up the place too, can't you? <laughs> oh man, I love that. Let's go over there and uh, get a turkey. Yeah. Oh, he didn't want to fall. There we go. Let's get that top turkey. Let's get higher now. There we go. <laughs> There's a pig over there at these hit too. Uh, click. <laughs> oh man. That one, no it didn't. Uh, I gotta shoot a couple more because I missed that last shot, didn't I? Okay. Good old black powder. Don't you love it? I wish y'all could smell it. Maybe that's what we need to offer. Some of those uh, little strips that you can uh, impregnate it with odor, can mail out to you, and uh, then let you know when we're going to do a black powder video to be sure and get it out, you know, and then just sniff it. You know, scratch and sniff black powder. <laughs> but uh, neat stuff, no doubt about it. What did I not tell you about this thing that uh, you're dying not to hear? Uh, very, very popular right on up through and you do realize you know this thing was manufactured uh, on up through like 1920 23 along in there and think about all the other really nice lever guns that you could say replaced it you know when you if you're not careful that's what you tend to think like the uh we've talked about you've seen the 1876 here you've seen the 1886 beautiful rifle a more modern uh, stronger a very sturdy gun will handle really powerful cartridges like the 4570. Uh, after that, you know, the 1892, you know, what's more popular than that hardly, the 1894, and just, you know, right on through. But yet, through all of those, they didn't replace this. You know, they kept making this. Uh, so they was, those were, I guess, compliments or supplements, you know, to, to the lever action world. This thing still was manufactured and uh, still a popular rifle. And again, this is the one that you should be seeing in so many of the Westerns, really. Because most of the Westerns, you, I would say most, the time period generally is like after the Civil War up through about the 1880s. Now that's kind of your time frame usually, isn't it? And there were no 1892s and 1894s at that time. Uh, they most, for the most part, would have been carrying something like this. All right, what do we want to pop here? Let's get this two later before we forget it. Yeah. Let's move around a little. Let's share the lead. Yeah. 
I can't see the targets. <laughs> I lost the target. <laughs> and that would have been an issue, you know, back in the day, wouldn't it? Uh, you touch off a few of these in uh, the average bar room, because I know that's happened to me lots of times. And uh, you know, with a dimly lit uh, bar room at night, uh, saloon in Dodge City, it's already uh, not very well you know, lit in there. And then you touch off a bunch of these things and it gets all smoky and, uh, and the bad guys are shooting at you and all that kind of thing. It, it, it'd get pretty interesting, wouldn't it? So uh, anyway, a little fun with the 1873 and I apologize to it and to you for not uh, bringing it out sooner uh, over the years. Yeah, I mean, it's been out, but we've just not given it the love it deserves because uh, the 1873 is a great year uh, for innovation and, uh, and this rifle is a, a masterpiece and really sweet action. They're, they're fun to shoot and I've never had any trouble with this thing. The, some people find them a little finicky, but uh, I know people in the cowboy action matches sometimes are always adjusting their, their levers and everything. Never did have any trouble with this baby. It's just cranked right on. Uh, anyway, light was good.